Hey guys, it is Chad here from the Electric Academy, from electricacademy.com, doing my Facebook live show. I told you guys last week, I did a video on Y versus Delta, and uh, had a lot of fun with that, did a lot of research, and just tried to make it a quick one overview. I'm going to be working on something that's a little deeper, because I had a lot of people say that they wanted to get deeper into the theory behind that. So I don't know if it's going to be a Facebook Live on that, but it will be definitely something. I'm probably going to be doing something a little more... Um, in depth, so it's probably going to be more of a video course, something along that lines. Uh, if you are new to this page, make sure you go up to the top of the page, the Facebook page here, and give it a like, and uh, that just gets you into the queue as to knowing when I put these videos out. I'm sending out a newsletter tomorrow that will let you know I've come up with a schedule for the Electric Academy. I'm going to on Mondays. I'm going to be doing a blog post. Tuesdays I'm taking off. Wednesdays is going to be your newsletter, so I'll just kind of send out a newsletter which kind of lets you know what happened the previous week. And then from there, I on Thursdays, we'll be doing this Facebook Live, which I'm actually going to be doing a little early today because i got to teach on Thursday. And then Friday, I do a bit of a rant, and then we do the whole cycle again. So make sure you join the newsletter so that you can kind of get in the know. But you guys aren't watching for that. You are watching because I told you last week that I would be doing a little something-something on ArcFault. Because we all have to put in our call breakers, and we know that the code, whether it's the CEC, which is the Canadian Electric Code, or the NEC, which most of you guys who are watching this are watch or paying attention to, our fault's huge, and it's coming in big time. Now, I've got some notes on this. One second. I had the notes over top there. Now, here's some uh, notes that I have about our fault and why it's important. So, the NFPA said that in 2011, there are 47,700 home fires and they all involved some type of electrical fire. Those are, so there was 47,700 fires that had some sort of electrical fault attributed to them. These fires resulted in 418 deaths, 1,570 injuries, and $1.4 billion in direct property damage. That's insane. Uh, they also estimate that 50% of those electrical fires probably could have been prevented had they been using AFCIs or arc fault circuit interrupters or some sort of OBC uh, receptacle. We'll talk a little bit about that. So what I thought I'd do is kind of look into this whole arc fault because we've been talking a lot about it at work because it's becoming part of the Canadian code. I know it's become part of the National Electrical Code as well, the NEC. And we all know that arc fault can be an issue but not always know what arc faults are. So what I did was I whipped up a little presentation or presentation. I'm just going to call that up right now. So let me share my screen with you guys. And I'm going to go to, let's see here, presentation, slideshow. Let's get this on the go. So basically, here we are. What are arc faults and how does an arc fault breaker work? Again, just so you know, I'm not an engineer. I'm an electrician by trade. I'm a teacher as well. So this is going to be just a broad overview, just to give you an idea of how it works. Now, there's two types of arc faults that we deal with. There's what's known as a series arc fault and a parallel arc fault. A series arc fault is this. You see it right down here, if you look in the line here, you'll see that there's a break in the line and there's an arc across. So the current's being pushed across there. Now, series arc faults are not as dangerous as parallel arc faults, but they can still cause issues with the insulation heating up, kind of getting burnt and causing other issues. They still can cause a fire, but they are limited. The current on the arc fault itself is limited by the load. So they're not as serious as a parallel arc fault, parallel arc fault. Now, some areas that we can see series arc faults or arcs happening, we've all seen this where the cord kind of gets frayed and cut up or beat up and old. Uh, then the, this can happen definitely. So we've seen that. Another very common area that you see series arcs are switches. So when we have our arc fault protection, we need to make sure that they can recognize the difference between something like this and a switch. Because when you switch, if we've learned anything from school, when you switch, there's always a bit of an arc there, especially when you're dealing with inductive loads. Again, not going to get too much into it. Just trust me if you don't believe me. But a switch will always have an arc. You've seen it when you've switched. I'm sure some of you guys see that little spark that comes. Now, more serious are these guys. Is the parallel arc faults. So you can get that by having your, um, your plug behind, say, your nightstand and getting pushing in, into that and bumping it and causing a short in there. So it's basically a parallel arc fault is going to be between line and neutral or line and ground, but not enough to trip the uh, overcurrent device. All right? So not enough to trip your regular breaker, but enough to cause if there's an open between the 
hot in the ground or the hot in the neutral, it can arc across and those can get pretty hot and pretty dangerous because the only thing that's limiting that is the resistance of the wire at that point, not just the load. Another instance, when you got something by a radiator, heat kind of wrecks this, sunlight will break down the insulation in integrity. Um, oops, sorry, let me just go forward again here. Now here's a common, well, it's not common. I've seen it a couple of times though, is when you put an extension cord or something by a door and you close the door on it, that's gonna push on the insulation. It's gonna push on the hot and the neutral. And we've seen this, nails, there's nothing worse than that. Nails are screws through a wire. And I'm talking to you drywallers. And also here's something that we've seen, stapling. When you staple too hard and you bash that thing in your S1s and you put two wires under an S1 or, or vice versa, you know, you add too much or you pound it in too far. You're pinching on that wire, which could wreck the insulation or cause some sort of compromise in the insulation. So you got to be careful for that because, again, these parallel, parallel arc faults are super dangerous because it might not cause enough current for the, the breaker itself to trip, but that arc is the voltage that's present pushing it across the current across there, and it can go super, super high super hot they say that some arc faults can get up to nine to ten thousand degrees fahrenheit so that's where you're getting your fires from guys it's just it's very very important that we understand what the difference between a series arc fault and a parallel arc fault parallel arc faults very dangerous series arc faults they are dangerous but not as dangerous as a parallel now let's talk about how these breakers work in an ideal situation what we have here is you've got a say that's called the blue and the voltage waveform and the the yellow, the current waveform. So they look pretty good, they're on top of each other. This is obviously a completely resistive circuit because they're crossing the x-axis at the same time. So that's what we wanna see. What an arc fault looks like, when something goes into an arc fault, here's what happens. As they get, this is the green is definitely the current. They notice that these shoulders, develop these shoulders at the wave, at the x-axis or at the zero point. And this actually, the current itself is a little lower than the ideal current, which is funny enough. But the big difference is these guys. You notice here, this is your voltage waveform. First off, let's talk about it's really noisy. It's kind of a skanky waveform here. You notice it's not nice and neat. It's kind of got a lot of noise on it. Up here, it's creating an arc. So that's where it jumps up. And on this half cycle, jumps up again. So these are where the arcs are occurring and pushing the current across you at its highest, where the current is at its highest, you're pushing through to get to its highest, is where the arc occurs. So this is what's happening when we have an arc fault. So what we need to have is something that can handle that. So what we have is your arc fault circuit interrupter. Now, the difference between them, now, an arc fault circuit interrupter looks exactly like a GFCI, right? You've got the, um, you got the breaker, and then you've got this guy that ties back to the neutral. It is very, very different than the GFCI though. A GFCI measures current going in and current going out. And if there's any difference, it trips a breaker, depending on the sensitivity of the breaker. This here, this AFCI has this printed circuit board and almost some of them have a little microprocessor in it. What they do is they are watching the waveforms. They're watching this. They want to see your waveforms looking similar to this. As soon as it sees something, that looks like this, it trips the breaker. So that's what makes them a little more expensive. And you know what I'm talking about, they're not cheap. Last I checked, I think an arc fault circuit interrupter, I think, and it was probably about, I don't know, six months ago that I looked, maybe a year ago even, I think it was around 65 bucks for a 15 amp arc fault breaker. So that's quite expensive. But if you can see why they're expensive. They've got this printed circuit board here that is monitoring the waveform. And so it's watching that. So that's why we're spending all this money on it. Now I'm just gonna call myself back up here. Let's uh, get me back into the picture here, into the slideshow. So call me back up, boop, boop, here we go. So that's what's happening with that. Now, hey, thanks, Scott. Hey, Fidel. Um, so you have to watch for that, guys. We have to watch for that. Now there's things that are different that some people are complaining about, especially the contractors, is when we're building new houses, I know that the CEC and the NEC are both saying that they have to have most receptacles have to be AFCI protected now. So what they've done is they've made a code and we'll, I could get into that some other time, but you can get, oh, what are they called? OBC, so their outlet branch circuit protection. So you can get, it's like a GFCI plug, but it's an arc fault plug. And you can protect your circuits through that, which is actually cheaper. It's just that you have to have the wire from the panel 
to the first plug has to be mechanically protected. But again, that's a whole other discussion for another time. So that's basically what I wanted to cover. I know it's short and sweet, but remember when it comes to arc fault, there's two types of arc faults. There are series and there are parallel. It used to be that the breakers could only handle parallel arc faults. Now they have what's called a combination that can handle series and parallel. Uh, the series ones, they also make sure that they can watch for when switches are going or when motors are running. Because if you think about it, your vacuum cleaner's got a motor in it. Motors have brushes, brushes cause sparking and arcing, right? So they have to watch for that. So that's why these things are so freaking expensive. So again, series parallel. So you have a series circuit, or not a series circuit, a series fault, which is just a break in the line and it's trying to jump across. You have a parallel fault, which is going from line to neutral or line to ground, which can cause temperatures of upwards to nine to 10,000 degrees, which is why our houses are catching fire. So we got to watch for that. And then we have to also watch for the fact that we have to put these things in. It's a pain in the butt, but it's safe. We're going to all eventually be thankful that they're there. But again, we put in an arc fault circuit interrupter or your AFCI, and they're now mostly all combination. It used to be the old ones could only handle a parallel arc fault. Now the new ones are combination, which handles series and combination or series and parallel arc faults as well. All right, that's all I got to talk to you guys about that for today. Make sure if you're just checking on on the replay or you're watching live now, make sure you go back. I got a little view uh, of what the actual waveforms look like. So the breakers themselves, remember, monitor the actual waveforms. They are looking at the waveforms themselves. They're not just monitoring current because it's not the current that causes the fire. It, you could get an arc with a very low current, but that arc could be very, very hot. All right, so be careful for that. So keep up emailing me. Keep up letting me know what you guys want me to talk about. I will uh, let you know what next week's is going to be. Friday, this Friday, I'm going to have a little mini rant going on. I had a rant last week about um, what to do if you got a jerk for a boss and how maybe it's not your boss, maybe it's you. I got some good feedback on that. And just let me know what you guys are thinking. Check out the Electric Academy. There's some um, stuff there. Do I have any recommendations for BEE in classes? Not at the moment, Tony, but I'm going to look into that for you. I'll look into it and get back to you. If you're part of the Facebook page, make sure you join that Facebook page. I'll send you a message when I look deeper into that for you. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So make sure you pop by the Electric Academy page, the actual site itself, and ch check out the Facebook page. I got a rant coming on Friday. There will be a newsletter going out tomorrow. If you haven't joined the newsletter, it's probably in your best interest too. And just keep the emails coming, guys. I totally appreciate all the feedback you've been giving me. Your guys' questions are what keeps us going. So I need more questions. I've got lists building. There's, I've got stuff going on. I've got uh, topics coming. But I would love to uh, make sure that i got more topics coming. And I want to make sure that I'm providing value for you guys. All right? So keep the emails coming. Chad at theelectricacademy.com. Just go to the website. You'll see my, my face and everything's all over there. All right? Hope you have a great day. Oh, before I forget, go to the Facebook group. And my last post was, what are you guys working on? I would love to see pictures of what you're working on because I know if you're anything like me, you're taking pictures of this stuff. So post it there. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. I have one guy who's rebuilding a synchronous motor. Another guy's working on a shipyard. Another guy's doing some heat trace. So get your, uh, get your stuff out there. I would love to see what's happening. All right. Have a great day. Hope you guys are working safe. Stay safe. I will see you on Friday unless you're part of the newsletter. Then I will talk to you tomorrow via newsletter. I'm always available on the Electric Academy uh, Facebook page there, so pop on by. All right. Oh, wait a second. Pat's got a question here. Pat, do you do code update classes? I think yours would be a great class. Thanks, Pat. Problem with that is here's the deal with my code updates. I do code, except I am a Canadian, so I am following the Canadian electrical code. What I'm going to be doing, though, is I've got a couple friends who are down in the States, and I'm trying to line up getting myself a NEC code book because your guys' code is almost identical to ours and just it's just a matter of which rules or what. So uh, I would definitely be doing some code stuff as far as NEC is concerned. So that's coming, all right? Don't worry about it. If you're Canadian, then yes, I can get some stuff and whip it together for you. You Americans, it's coming, I promise, all right? All right, that's that. If uh, you guys do want to see some more code stuff though, and that, that, that includes the NEC stuff because I can't talk about that because I can just get my hand on the copy and just dig into it. Give me a thumbs up and let me know because I would love to do some more stuff with the code, especially NEC. I'd like to get my fingers into that pot. 
All right, thanks guys. I'm gonna go because I got to go home and pick up some uh, food on my way home because it's my, my turn to cook supper tonight. So there we go. All right, have a great day. Talk to you guys later on. See you tomorrow. If not, I'll see you on Friday.